paperwork took about six, seven months. You know, I was excited. I didn't know what to do. You know, I didn't even go. I went and bought a pizza <laughs> to, to try and let it sink in. You know, it didn't come all in one shot. There was 1.2 that came in. There was 2.7 that came in, there was 99,000 that came in, and there was another amount which I can't, <laughs> can't remember. I met this lady on Facebook. She wanted to start a business with me because she found out that I had a lot of money. I told her, because you know, you know what you like, eh? you want to impress the lady, so you're a rich man. And... So she said, okay, come, I'll look after you until we can get, till the money comes in so we can get the business going. I met a woman in Middleburg and he moved down to Middleburg. I think he left in April of 2017. She had a BMW, she came and fetched me and a BMW. Now I'm living the high life. <laughs> the, the day that the money came in, I was at Middleburg living with this lady. From the next day, my mind just go, you know, let's spend. From there, life changed drastically. Because it, it, now there, there was money, and there was also actually a woman in his life that but it was one of those women that knew he had, he had money and tried using him for it. So I spent to her doctors, I bought her furniture as well. I bought her clothes, 20,000 just on clothes, you know. And then I, I bought myself a pair of tackies at Pip. So <laughs> she went to all the shops. You know, I've always been very cheap clothes. You know, you get that feeling it'll never end. You know, I'm not thinking about investing and things like that. And he had this idea about starting a party bus. Then if he phoned me up and he said, can I help him? to go and fetch the bus. We flew down to Cape Town to pick up the party bus. So it was me, Andrew, my son, Tara and her son, and Andre. The, the plane ticket for the four of us was 10 and a half thousand rand. The bus was 89,000. It was a bus rigged out to serve drinks and to transport people. And we were gonna go down to, to dams and to rivers and you know, you pick the people up at one spot and you drive them down to a, to a venue and they can have a spend a day at the venue and then you drive them back again. When we got back, that's when the problem started. There were problems with that, this lady. She didn't want anything more to do with the business. Because I found out that a lot of the trips were actually her friends. Because while, the, while we had the bus up here, we did a lot of trips, but the trips were done at my expense. There, there was no income coming in. This lady's other son came and said to me, listen, invest. 500,000, I'll pay you back 20,000 rand a month. He wanted to buy a dump truck with, for the mines, you know, to move the sand on the mines. You know, and then me again, you know, I think, hey, there's, well, at least there'll be 20,000 rand coming in a month. So I did it, and that was the last that I saw of my 500,000. So then I moved out, I got a flat in Middleburg. I still had the bus, but also she said, if I give her 160,000, to buy her a BMW, she would give me her BMW. So I paid her friend the 160,000. And it turned out that her BMW wasn't actually her BMW. I actually found out later it was her boyfriend's because she was still involved with the boyfriend. So what I did after that was I'd set Andre up here in Benoni in a flat and I bought him an Audi. An Audi Quattro for 70,000 for the Audi and he said, he has the keys, you can drive it. And uh, so I said, I for the first time in a, many years I had a car. So I went and bought an X3 for 123,000. Then while I had that car, I met another lady in Pretoria. She moved in with me at Middleburg. It looked like this lady wasn't using him. It, it looked like he was actually, for a change, he was actually happy with somebody. Him and I had a little bit of a falling out then in November, as it always comes down to was a bit of money disagreed about. I chased Andre away and took my, the Audi back. Then the money started running out. So what I did then was I sold the X3 that I just bought, so because I had the Audi. I sold it for 40. And then I also sold the party bus. I got the second lady's son to sell it. And he said he could only get 40,000 and he'll give me 29,000 which was also, no, he sold it for a lot more, which I also found out later. Another lot of money came in. I think it was, it was 2.7 that came in. When the 2.7 came in, I came up here to Rayton, 
I bought a house for myself. It was a townhouse, it was 560,000. A few days or a few weeks, I'm not really sure what the timeline was there, but really shortly after he bought the first house, he bought the second house, and then he told me and my brother that um, we can go, well, we should live in the second house. And then um, one day, if something happens to him, those two houses would be one for me and one for my brother. We were in the house right next door to him. The, the two houses were split by a garage. He actually called me and both my other sisters and he told us, okay, well, I want to buy you guys each a car. And then me and my brother met him at the gate of the estate where we were living. And he took us, we went to go look at cars. I got a Chevy utility bucket. I think it was 110. Megan got a VW Polo. A Volkswagen Polo TDI. It was about 150 and the other sister got a Kia Picanto, and the Picanto was about, about 116. After that, I gave my son and my daughter and the third child, I gave them 100,000 each, and then I gave them another 50,000 each. So the, basically the three children had 150,000 plus a car. Yeah, that showed me he was really serious about being back in our lives. A big show of, okay, listen, I know I wasn't in your lives, but I'm here now and I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to make up for all the time that we lost. So that was really also... A lot of people were phoning him up and asking him uh, for loans to get married. I, I, was, I was a hero. <laughs> Here's my story.